So yeah, we arrived at the Manchester airport. So we boarded the plane for a two and a half hour trip to Iceland. So here I am in the uh, hotel room, the Foss Hotel in Iceland. Being the unsocial person I am, I stayed behind in the room while everyone else has gone off to explore the hotel. Um, where uh, <laughs> this is where my bed is. For some reason, I've got a double bed to myself, and uh, but it's quite good though. It's got um, got a radio right there, and because it's in a place called Iceland and it's like zero degrees outside, that's quite handy. Got a TV, don't know how that works. First impressions of Iceland, uh, quite um, otherworldly. Sort of like the landscape is kind of moonscapey because all the rocks are like um, come out of a volcano. They say the ground's really new, but it looks just really bizarre and like um, sort of barren as well. There's not many, there's not have, like any trees at all. There's sort of mountain ranges in the in the distance, but like the area you're in is just so flat. It's like as flat as Lincolnshire. Um, and then where we are right now is uh, Reykjavik. And Reykjavik itself is like, it's a really new looking city, just like in the way that the ground's new because it's like come out of a volcano in the last 800 years. The city itself looks really new compared to like London and you know, just other cities. And it's kind of, it's really, kind of weird actually. Like we drove past an area which just said was the oldest part and it didn't even look that old compared to what you'd call the oldest part of London or Lincoln for say. We went to the spa today, really enjoyed the spa. Um, that was great, that was, because it was like a hot spring, which was heating the water. You just kind of lie there, and um, the sun actually set over the pool, and it was uh, quite a nice moment, actually. Um, so now we're just going to get some rest after having some pizza, and get ready for tomorrow. We are uh, in Reykjavik, which is the capital of Iceland, for those of you that don't know. Wow. Touring the city. And, um, lads on tour. Lads on tour. <laughs> Made the games. That's where you end it. <laughs> day two and day three, we basically went around and looked at some waterfalls and, you know, really brilliant looking waterfalls. Unfortunately, this was a bit clouded by the fact that it actually rained an awful lot on uh, day two and uh, day three, and uh, this was basically my view out of the window. I just, you know, my view was mainly rain hitting it rather than the landscape of Iceland, uh, which <laughs> seemed a bit of a shame. Um, but as, a, as someone who comes from Britain, kind of used to that. In fact, day two and day three for me blurred into one quite quickly. I mean, the scenery in Iceland was just like fantastic for the most part. You know, apart from the lack of trees and the lack of animals and the lack of people actually, because only uh, 300,000 people live in Iceland overall, and uh, about 130,000 of those live in the city. And so there's just hardly anyone around, and you, you go down roads for miles and there's just no houses. And it, it was really odd. It seemed busier in like Lincolnshire than it did in Iceland and that was odd considering what normally because Lincolnshire is such a kind of like off the map kind of place at least in my eyes in Britain. When you go off to different countries you see these cities and they're sprawling and there's loads of people everywhere and that's kind of weird you're not used to that but here it was almost like that was that's almost like what it's like living in the like countryside of Lincoln like the walls you know there's hard, there's not many houses but it, in, there's, in fact there's more houses where I've come from than there and that's a weird thing to experience when you come from a rural village so then later on the trip we got to one of my favorite moments of the trip which was taking a boat tour around a uh, former, I should probably say, glacier in Iceland. And uh, this is where actually the whole area is melted. You know, all of it used to be frozen. 
but now you've only got these like exposed eye cap, ice caps around. And the rest of the area is just, you know, it's be, it, it, because of like global warming and stuff, it's become water rather than ice. And it was quite a shocking moment, really, for me, because you spend a lot of the time... You, you, it's easy to ignore global warming when you live in Britain. In fact, you, you know, you might even think it'd be good to have a bit of global warming on a day like today, which is quite cold. You think, oh yeah, global warming would be good. But you, you, never, you never see the effects of global warming in Britain, really. And actually seeing the effects of global warming firsthand was quite shocking. I, I felt bad. And I felt bad for two reasons. One, because it was just a sort of not particularly great sight to see that this former area, which must have been a beautiful sort of looking ice sheet, uh, has now become a pool of water and that's because of humans and uh, our sort of greed and dependence on energy and electrics. But also the, the, the thing which got to me more was that after seeing that I knew that I'd come back here and still not do anything about it. And and the and because part of you still thinks, well, I'm I don't make a difference. I if I go back and I use my TV and my laptop and right now I'm using a, a light to uh, light me. You think that's if I turn them off, it's not going to save the ice caps because it's just you and I don't have the kind of power to be able to make any big difference and that's what got to me more I knew I was going to come back and I knew I wouldn't care again even after seeing something like that and I saw it's you know I hate myself for it but it's difficult when it's difficult to care so much about something like that when you're just in a safe area and you, you're not thinking long term you're not thinking about your grandchildren or your descendants afterwards and unfortunately I think that's a view that's shared across the world and you know we'll see if the human race as a whole can fix it but it got to me a little bit. Oh two seals down there! <laughs> that's nice! West. Down there you can see the Oh, one's gone. But as a whole, I really enjoyed that boat trip. Um, <laughs> but these are the wild seals. Nice yeah. wide angle shot of it. That boat trip was great, but the next thing was the weirdest thing I've possibly ever seen. This beach was black. And uh, because of the glacier nearby being broken up, Part, big chunks of ice are just like being washed onto the sea so they'd float down this channel away from the glacier and then the, 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 the coastline was right there so the coast would like the waves would crash the ice onto the beach and they just kind of like stood there as like little monuments it was sort of beautiful and how odd it looked yeah that was that was brilliant that was a highlight of the trip actually which seems weird for highlight of the trip would be visiting the beach but Taking a video there. There's a really big one there. This is getting weird now. So after another brief hotel visit, we went out for a glacier walk on the uh, on the Sunday, which I I was nervous about the whole trip. I was really not looking forward to the glacier walk because I thought there was going to be a lot of walking. We were told we are going to be out for four hours and uh, four hours in Iceland is like the whole day. It feels like it because it's freezing there and uh, four hours in freezing cold weather didn't really sound like something we wanted to do.
But actually, yet again, uh, I was proved wrong, and uh, it was brilliant. We uh, we had to take a sort of walk up to the glacier and uh, put on these crampons, you know, these spikes for the bottom of the shoe, so we could actually get grip on the ice. And there was like a cave which we were taken into and uh, we were told this was probably the last time any tour would be taken through the cave because I think you can actually see that the water is dripping down from the top you know the ice is melting at such a quick rate uh, that this uh, cave is not going to be safe to go through very soon because it might just collapse at any moment. You see this big big black line here? This is like a layer of that volcano. Yeah, it's volcanic ash, so this incident <laughs> happened some thousand years ago. We have these layers all over the ice. <laughs> and then we just had a walk around the glacier and it was incredible. Just the views and, and the feeling of walking on this solid ice not slipping or it was, just, it was just amazing. I really enjoyed that. So the glacier walk was definitely a highlight of the trip. And uh, something I probably won't ever get to do again unless I go back um, which I find doubtful uh, it was it was just brilliant and I really enjoyed it so after the glacier walk we uh, started to drive back to Reykjavik because we're sort of taking a bit of a tour around the country and uh, it was at this point that for one of the first times during the trip the Sun actually came out and we're treated with uh, some sunlight rather than the kind of fog and rain that we'd been dealing with. And uh, you know, we just kind of reflected on the trip. So uh, it's, our, it's our last day in Iceland. We're travelling back to Reykjavik, which is where we're flying home from. It's been a pretty good few days. Lots of banter. Um, it's the sun. The weather has improved drastically in the last five minutes. So yeah, the food's been good, the hotel's been good, some fun in some hot tubs, if you know what I mean. You know, lot, lots of socialising, talking to people we don't normally talk to. It's always a good thing, you know, you can be quite close within the group and give it a week and you know they'll have forgotten my name. <laughs> True that. So yeah. Thanks for playing. This has caught me. As you can see, his beard's already reappearing after just five days. Coming out in the crevice. I didn't notice that. Huh. It grows yeah. pretty slowly, in all fairness. Well, I'm surprised you didn't notice, but with that disgusting lump that's on your chin. <laughs> I don't <know. laughs> Well, I, I thought it was quite good. Quite, yeah, it's, it's, it's grown well, but it's a bit manky, isn't it? <laughs> manky? It's grown, it's kind of got like. Like Blonde. a beard fall, like a waterfall yeah. over the top yeah. of your... I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's like a, it's like a three out of ten one sort of chin strap. Not even three. I can't get it the tail even get all the way It's like a two point five chin warmer. <laughs> that Thank looks you. like a brush. Oh, okay, it does look a bit like a toilet brush. It's like those wiry hairs that no one really wants to touch. The pubes get stuck to a toilet brush when you're cleaning it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that though. <laughs> First thing I to... He's, he's having to change. He's kind of the... looking at his cordy. <laughs> filming him. Oh, Trying another cordy and Freddy feature. I'm just filming the landscape. I'm it definitely does. more sexy than the landscape, just saying. I'm running a 30 frame second though. Yeah, can I, can I drop a quick shout oh, out to yeah. Harry Lee? Oh, God, you know, that, that is, battery is 100% funnier than Ben.
it, it was quite a sort of um, ironic moment, but that's the time when the sun came out, but that was the moment where we got to see more of the landscape just on the last night that we're going to be there and it was sort of nice just to see Iceland in a bit more of its uh, true nature before we left rather than the kind of disappointing fog that was uh, present in the couple of the days before. It was during this trip back to Reykjavik that uh, our tour guide, Betty, who had become our sort of surrogate mother throughout the whole trip and uh, everyone adored uh, her. This was the moment when she left us. I am not coming with you to the airport. No! Why? Everyone had grown quite attached to Betty during the whole trip and it was quite a sort of um, nice moment saying goodbye to her and I think, yeah. We are having dinner tonight. We're taking you home. <laughs> oh, You're our ultimate, yes. ultimate souvenir. <laughs> and it's a little piece of ice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you are so sweet. No, oh, and so good, Steve. <laughs> uh, we went for one last meal, actually. Uh, makes it sound like the last supper all of a sudden. She was our prophet, and uh, we were going to have fish and bread to see her off. No, um, although we did have fish, we had whale, in fact. And it feels bad because you know whales are like sort of endangered or whatever, but oh, they tasted good. It was like, it was sort of like really nice steak uh, and they did it really rare as well. It didn't taste like fish because normally I'm quite bad with fish. If I have fish I end up feeling sick afterwards. Uh, which is a shame because actually I don't mind the taste of fish but I just feel really pukey after I eat it. But with this whale, god no, if it, I've just felt full and, and I ate the quickest I've ever ate that evening. And uh, I sat next to Courtney and Courtney is a quick eater. And I actually finished at roughly at the same time as him, which normally would never happen because even like with the Burger King we had at the airport, I took about at least half an hour just eating a few hash browns and a cheese uh, and egg uh, burger. Uh, but this I wolfed out so quickly because I just, it was delicious. Really liked it. It makes me want to go out and kill more whale. I think we should definitely be killing more whale and getting more meat <laughs> from it <laughs> because that was delicious and uh, I'm saying that because I know that there's some one of my friends is a vegan he's gonna hate me saying that <laughs> but um tasted brilliant you know if that's what endangered species taste like then mm -mm, bring me some more <laughs> so with a full stomach full of whale I went to bed for the last time and uh, wow that that makes me sound like I'm dying I, I wasn't dying. Not now. <clears throat> so we said goodbye to the sort of diverse and interesting landscape that was Iceland. to the more subtle, unappreciated <laughs> and uh, pretty much dull landscape of Manchester. So once arriving at Manchester airport once again there was another, the, the staple of a school trip I, I would say, the bus trip uh, back to school. But when you do fly back into Britain what you notice is there's suddenly there's trees everywhere. How many trees are there here? You don't realise when, you, when you're in Britain, you don't think there's many trees. But when, when you come back, you're like, wow, we have a lot of trees. You know, just as eventful as any other school bus trip, <laughs> nothing happened. Uh, you know, there's no volcanoes to look at or waterfalls. Just uh, people driving cars on motorways. But for me, that's a beauty in life. You know, a lot of people on the bus on the way back were saying, oh, you know, I don't like being in Britain now, it makes it seem rubbish. No, not for me. Whenever I go on holiday and come back to Britain, I realise how much I love being in such a boring country. You know, you come back and the weather's sort of mild. You know, it's not too warm, it's not particularly too cold, 
you get some rain, maybe you get a bit of snow when it sort of suits, and there's no dangerous creatures or volcanoes going off. It's brilliant to live in a country where nothing happens. It is brilliantly boring to live in Britain, and that for me is bliss. Thank you to Iceland for making me appreciate my boring country. As always, I bought a mug from a uh, from, uh, country. Here's my Iceland mug with a uh, puffin there, or two puffins, I guess, and I don't know, some other birds up here, but I don't care about them. Um, and uh, the puffin is apparently the national symbol of Iceland, you know, um, the you know, that national bird. What's weird is though, I swear I didn't see a single puffin at all. So I think maybe they should change that unless, uh, you know, they buy more puffins. The only thing, the only bird I did see was a seagull. So maybe that should be the national symbol. Although, seagulls are rubbish. <laughs>